Alright, you might have seen my other product review videos for some of the Cromwellic stuff. Again, I'm, they don't sponsor me at all. Uh, I'm just a customer like you guys are. And since I actually model the 10th Cavalry Brigade, I thought, you know what? Cromwellic has got some specific units, uh, models for 10th Cavalry Brigade, so I want to take a look at those. Now, this particular uh, model set is the anti-tank gun, Bofors 37mm anti-tank gun. Uh, it was a good gun at the time, uh, but the models are the regular Polish Army uh, soldiers. They don't have a specific 10th Cavalry Brigade uh, anti-tank gun. I don't know if they're planning it or not, but anyway, uh, to me it's not a big deal. I can get the gun kit, and I can actually now, by using some other miniatures, I can use the gun either to represent my 10th Cavalry Brigade or when I just want to play a regular Polish Army uh, unit. So let's take a quick look at the uh, models and see how they compare to some of the other models out there. All right, take a look. All right, so here's the anti-tank gun uh, team. comes with uh, three crew, which is typical for uh, the bolt action, uh, and then essentially a five-piece anti-tank gun kit. Actually, the f this is actually not much different than... Uh, Warlord, except Warlord comes with uh, essentially seven pieces. The two legs and the main chassis of the uh, anti-tank gun are three separate pieces in the Warlord kit. I'm not certain if this is, I think this is bent in packaging. I'll take a quick look because it doesn't look pretty, it doesn't look like it's intended to be that way, even though it seems pretty even. I'm going to take a look at some pictures of the actual AT guns and I'll actually put a note on the screen whether this is due to packaging or whether this is actually designed that way. But you'll notice they actually do a pretty good job here. I'll bring that closer. You can see the feet of the anti-tank gun's uh, legs actually are designed real well to you know, dig into the ground. So that's a pretty good detail considering a lot of companies just skimp there. This also has a couple additional details on the legs. Let's take bring up the, here's a Warlord Games version. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and we'll take a quick look. Okay, so now if we just lay it all together you know, lengthwise it's pretty much all the same. Uh, here is the, the gun that's going to mount like this. That's right. <clears throat> the gun is going to slide just like the in the Warlord one, slide through here. And then this, there's a little nub there that's going to sit on the carriage. So I'm going to have to glue it together. Uh, but overall, the proportions look pretty good. It's not much bigger than this. Uh, the only it's it actually scales out pretty well comparatively. Wheels are the same because this is actually these are actually scale uh, 28 mil. They're not heroic 28 mil. So that is a pretty good uh, representation. And if you notice, the actual gun shield has the same lines and everything. The only difference is that the this upper section is a little bit. Uh, straighter, you know, taller, a little bit straighter. The rivet detail is pretty nice, and it's harder to see the rivet detail on this one because of the being painted. Uh, there's also some scalloping, I'll call it, on top of that. Let's see if you can see it. I'll use this as a back, backdrop. You can see how it is not straight across. It's got the three different depressions. Here, it's straight across. So, here's a picture of the actual anti-tank gun. And you can see how the top of the gun shield compares. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at the infantry now, or the models for the infantry here. It comes on a 60 mil base, and these two are designed to be laying down, propping themselves up on parts of the guns for aiming and loading. Okay, so, but here's a 28 mil scale. Here's a Perry miniatures, again, 28 mil scale. You can see it's the same. The only difference, of course, the helmet's going to be a little bit uh, lower, or a little bit different. Now, because these are 
anti-tank guns for um, uh, that I'm, I'm going to use in my list for the 10th Cavalry Brigade. I'm going to have to. I'm going to actually be using another manufacturer's models uh, for the. You know, you'll see some videos coming up in a couple months uh, dealing with the Polish early war. But I'm going to paint these up so I'll be able to use the gun whether it's uh, regular Polish infantry or sorry, uh, yeah, Polish infantry or cavalry units uh, that it's supporting or my Black Brigade. So again, the, they scale really, really close to Perry, which is really something I like. Uh, I do prefer more scale infantry than heroic. But you take a look at this is Gorgon models. And I'm going to kind of bring this down so you can actually see it a little better. Uh, we're going to put this, we're going to bring the camera down so we can get a scale here. Zoom this in. So there's the two companies side by side. This is Gorgon Miniatures. Okay, they actually make a pretty good line of uh, kits for the uh, Polish 10th Cavalry Brigade. Obviously, it's a little bulkier, a little bit. Uh, it's 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 the heroic side, right? But all in all, size wise, height wise, is not too bad. They're both hunched over roughly the same uh, distance. They're both in an kneeling position. Sorry, there it goes. So, all in all, not too bad. Actually, let's do this real quick. Let's put him on the ground, because that way the, the bases are the same size. You can see they're, height-wise, they're good. So, these are, size-wise, pretty good, but they just don't have the mass that Gorgon Miniatures does. Because, again, Gorgon Miniatures is uh, uh, heroic, whereas this is Chromica scale. And here's a Warlord Mini. Again, we're going to put it in the same position. Now you can see Warlord has, again, just a little bit chunkier and actually a little bigger in this case. But again, when you have a unit separated out by, you know, a few inches, several inches on the table, you're not really going to notice the difference. Let's actually take a look at the detail itself. I'm going to have to unzoom a little bit here until it focuses well. There's some pretty crisp details on there, as far as the face and the, the uniform itself. Really nicely done. Uh, it's nice that they include a rifle on the uh, artilleryman's model, because just as a historical detail, th they did carry rifles, just in case the anti-tank gun was assaulted too closely with the infantry that needed to defend itself. The uh, unit needed to defend itself. That's not something that uh, most other companies, uh, you know, care to put on. So, I'm liking that. Now, here's one of the figures laying down. He's got some good, again, crisp detail on him. Can't wait to paint these up. They'll look even better. Um, even underneath has got some definition. Not that you're going to see it, but... So there are no instructions with the kit, but you can take a look at the pictures online and that will give you a sense of what it actually looks like as far as how to build the model. So um, let me go ahead and put the anti tank gun together and then we'll take a look at how it compares with the Warlord version. Alright, I just got started into the assembly and noticed something that uh, I'm going to try to figure out how to fix. Um, even though it was bubble wrapped sufficiently as far as I'm concerned, uh, Interestingly, there seems to be some crushing going on. You can see the actual, it looks like this whole mounting plate has been kind of skewed off to the right. And, I don't know if let's see if you can see, yeah. You can see right here, that support's actually broken. I'll have to bend that back in place. Okay, and I thought it was just the one, but it turns out both are that way. So, and this one's, and you can see the, it's not quite as skewed. So I'm going to have to fix that, and then be able to, that'll, that will enable me to mount the gun. Right now it doesn't mount uh, really at all. Alright, so give me a few more minutes and I'll get back to you. 
Well, got them built, and good news is I didn't need to do any. I uh, didn't need to contact uh, Cromwell to do any replacements or anything. Uh, this I, I arranged the model here to represent you know what the, what it shows in the uh, actual pictures on the website, how you'd actually list uh, lay out the crew. So, but let's take a look at the actual gun. Uh, again, nice detail, and it does include the two these two padded cushions, which is what the guys are actually laying on as one guy is aiming and the other guy is essentially, essentially loading, help and load. Now, when you... What I had to do for in the back here, now let's see if I can get a clean, there, clean view. Okay, I was able to use a pair of uh, needle nose pliers to kind of straighten out and shift these two sets of braces and that move that pocket, widen it out so the gun could fit in. And because it's such soft metal, it actually didn't go too bad. Uh, it had to be a little careful, uh, but I was able to, to manu manipulate it. And I was actually able to, I wouldn't say necessarily repair, but uh, line up, see if you can see there. See that little hairline crack? I was able to line those pieces back up so that at least they uh, they line up properly and I was able to mount the gun properly. So, uh, when you mount the gun, the recoil cylinder here is just ahead of the crease in this. And there's actually, when you look at the base, you can see, oops, sorry. You can see how it just it marries up. There's a small uh, dimple on the gun shield base, and then that fits into a hole on the main uh, carriage. Now, on this particular one, I kind of got it all wonky. It's a little. I would have to pop it a little bit and then shift it because it is angled a little bit, and I don't quite like that. But that's that's my problem, not uh, the the miniatures. But the details still come out really nice, and the guns are—they're pretty solid once you're once you're in this configuration. Again, because this is one casting, the two legs and the frame, that makes it a little more durable. Here's the uh, Warlord one for uh, comparison's sake. Okay, so the Warlord one is actually just a little smaller when it comes to the gun shield. Okay. Uh, all in all, it's. I mean, this appears to match my photographs better than this one, but uh, who I I can't really comment much more on that from that point. However, the where it really is telling is a detail on these legs. Warlord does not include the pads, the cushions, which are actually part of the gun, uh, the gun carriage. It's completely left off. Uh, the feet are actually really nicely sculpted on. Let's see if you can. There we go. Compared to Warlords, which are much smaller and almost just suggestive. So, I do kind of like the, the running gear uh, arrangement here compared to Warlord. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot to mounting wheels, but uh, these actually went on fairly, fairly straightforwardly. Here I think there's a little bit too much play when I initially built this gun. Uh, now, in both with both guns, there is you you have to slide in the barrel from the back, okay, to mount it in properly. Now, what's interesting is on this uh, Cromlech gun, there's actually a pad located right underneath. Here, where, right there, right where your gun is supposed to actually sit on the gun carriage. Okay, so it gives you sort of a positive uh, place to glue, not so much on the, the Warlord miniature. So they're not, neither, both guns are nice. I'm not going to argue, but I do prefer the details on the Karamlik one. It does look a little bit better. Uh, 
especially when you compare the, the gun shield size. This one looks a little bit more appropriately sized. And I love the cushion uh, details. It's a little more durable than this. Uh, you can see there's a, the thickness of the legs comparative to the Warlord model. All right, so that's pretty good from there. Now let's take a look at the crew, though. Um, all right, so there's the artilleryman in the center from Cromwell. Uh, to the left is a artilleryman from Perry Miniatures from their British 25-pounder kit. And to the right is a Warlord uh, infantryman from uh, their 10th Cavalry Brigade, or Black Brigade uh, kit. Again, kneeling to give you an idea of the size. So you can see the, just in general, uh, now, just before I go further, note that the artilleryman only comes on the 60mm base. You mount them on the base with the rest of the crew and uh, cannon. However, to make things kind of match up here, I gave, I used one of the heavy machine gun bases to put them on kind of the same levels there too, so you get a good picture of the size comparison with Perry, which is a 28 mil scale, uh, actual hist uh, realistic scale, cause just like Cromluck, whereas Warlord is a 28 mil heroic scale. So you can see he's, Warlord's a little bit bulkier, uh, but you know when you compare them side by side, there really isn't that big a difference. So I don't see how you know mixing these guys into your your uh, unit. Matter of fact, you can even swap in some uh, different. Rifleman minis uh, to kind of mix up the look of your your crew if you want. Like I have multiple guns now, I might want to do some mixing and matching on gun crews. Uh, especially now since this is actually a regular Polish artilleryman, so he's got a standard Polish helmet as opposed to the style helmet that the Black Brigade has. So again, remember these are uh, regular Polish Army uh, 37 millimeter anti tank guns. So from a size and perspective, uh, infantryman wise. They, they fit right alongside, even though Warlord is a slightly bulkier model than the historic scale Cromluck. So I'm liking the way the this miniature scales out. So what I have, my Warlord, I have two Warlord cannons, and I've got two Cromluck cannons. I have all four on the table. Uh, there's some special scenarios I'm, I've got where you know, I'm using an anti-tank gun platoon, essentially. Uh, really, they're not going to be that big of a difference uh, when you look at the models. They'll all kind of fit together. So I do like the way these this kit is coming together. All right. So uh, before we go any before I end the video, I wanted to kind of review kind of the the way I base my models, only because of, just to give you a, an idea. With the Cromwell kit, of course, the, the two artillerymen are mounted on the gun itself, and that that actually might work out pretty well. Uh, given the fact that you can you know, you know, arrange them so that with some careful placement of putty uh, at the base of their feet, they will stay put. You can actually remove them when they're casualties, leaving just one model, uh, whether it's the gunner, or aimer, or loader, or whatever, um, when there's only one guy left. Uh, I like to have mine separate as on these uh, special uh, arc bases that show kind of where the, where the actual firing arc is. And because they're separate, I can move them, as long as they're within one inch of the breech, I can kind of move them anywhere around. I can spread them out so it's very hard to get a large area effect template weapon on them. So, uh, granted, three inches is always going to get the whole crew, most likely, but uh, two inch won't. And one inch will only get one guy. Now, that being said, Really, the kit, the way the uh, the base kit works, you can actually place uh, a 25 mil base if you want underneath your model like this to kind of mark where he is. Okay, that way you can you get the one the, the 25 mil bases scattered around the gun, so you can actually remove the model when it when he's been killed. We also be able to measure the effects of template weapons more easily. That's just a possibility. But uh, I really this is a very compact model because if you notice when I when built as described in the kit, 
compare the footprint of the two. Okay. All right. Sorry for the little mess, camera mess up there, but if you look at the footprint of these two models, just the way I like it spread out, this is the that's a very compact footprint. Looks really nice, and honestly, if you don't care about the whole template thing, uh, it, it's nice to have just one model to move around. Really really simple instead of having the, the multiple models uh, but that's what it's gonna look like when I'm done with it so I'm excited to have this built uh, what I'm gonna end up doing since I'm gonna swap this between the two different types of uh, armies the 10th cavalry, cavalry Brigade and the regular Polish Army I'm gonna modify the figures slightly so that just on above the or at the shoulder there will be a pin that will kind of allow it to hang on that pad so that I can just place it on there without having to use the original base. I can still use that base. And that way, I've got a good looking model kind of built exactly the way uh, Cromwell intended, but I can swap out my two mini, my two different types of uh, soldiers 10th Cavalry Brigade versus. There we go my own or by the regular Polish army so with the exception of the having to clean up that crushed uh, gun shield gun mount area the kit is really good uh, I don't know how prevalent that's a little, little bit of damage was but both of my guns had it so I mean everything else I've gotten from them the TK sorry TK3 the uh, mini machine gun or heavy machine gun team and another officer team I got really they all came out nice this is the only one that had any damage so uh, don't know what to tell you guys there uh, just be prepared to be it, in case it happens just have a needle nose pliers ready and be very careful to gently open up that gun port uh, in the gun shield so you can slide that gun in because once you do the gun slides right in without any difficulty at all and positively mounts in so you can tell it's mounted all right so that's the, <laughs> that's the Kromlick and a tank gun 37 millimeter and a tank gun from Bofors so hope this was helpful to you guys so if, if you want go ahead and leave a comment below share your experience if you have any with these models uh, and share, like, and subscribe. Alright, thanks a lot, guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.